have some examples. Um, last night in a panic, um, I decided I'd better try this again before I did a demo on it. So this is what I'm going for. Probably just broke a couple of them. Um, this is what I'm going for. This one I prefer to use mesquite because of its stable characteristics. Those of y'all that are turned uh, enough know that mesquite's one of the few woods that uh, uh, the, moisture, the moisture leaves the wood. It uh, moves uh, relatively the same in the radial direction as it does in the tangential direction. So it's very stable and it makes a... Is that better? That's much better. Thank you. Okay. Well, my, my beard getting to you? I think I shaved this morning. Huh? Thank you. Um, so the movement is a bit relatively the same. And this is some really old, wormy um, persimmon. And, and uh, I think if it, that was finished, it might make an attractive-looking box. But So there's the ring box part. And then um, you'll see that you have the acorn scale pattern there. And um, the secret compartment is cleverly hid in the lid there. And it's mainly this pattern that makes it more or less disappear, not so much uh, any great turning skills. It's more or less when you put that pattern over the seam, it, it, your eye gets attracted by the pattern. You don't see the little ring going around so much. So um, if you get it to match up just right, it does pretty good. So this is what I'm going to cover. Now, there's two ways that I make this. So if you come to SWAT, I got a handout, or there'll be a handout for you that come into SWAT. And there's, so there's two ways to make this darn thing. Let's see what's left in here. Um, oh, yeah. Um, one way, of course, is with the tin and on the cap side and the other ways um, with the tenon on the nut side and I, you know I, the handout and at SWAT's going to show this way so just to be a contrarian I'm going to do it this way tonight you can do it either way whatever's comfortable uh, I found that the tenon here is easier for me um, going this way where you're hollowing there and you're hollowing there and you got two, you know, you're cutting in towards each other there, your chances of going through and messing the whole thing up are a lot better. Uh, this way, this tinning gives you extra space for a bigger recess in the secret part of the box. The patterns um, takes a little indexing to do um, and uh, it doesn't, that that's indexed and you see the index lines are pretty far apart okay so here I drew the indexing lines on rotate all the way across the top and then you have the horizontal lines um, you draw there and basically that makes a square grid and by just putting a crisscross in each one of those squares that generates that pattern so um, that's how I do it anyway. There's probably other ways to do it, but that's easy and simple, and I can do it pretty fast. The story behind how these things came about for me, I uh, have a really good friend in Florida. It was another arborist, nationally known. Um, worked with him for years in the International Tree Climbing Championship, and he died about two years ago from ALS. And uh, I was uh, fortunate to be commissioned uh, by the International Society of Arbor Culture to make a trophy for him for the outstanding volunteer for that event. And uh, at his funeral service, his friends, his wife, had got a whole bunch of acorns and they had it at this uh, beautiful arboretum. It had this nice pond in it and everybody took acorns and pitched them in the pond. And the wave interference pattern that you get from tossing stuff in a pond you know, signifies the um, the relationship and how one person isn't just independent of everybody else, that there's all these interactions that go on. And that was always important to Bruce. So um, so he, you know, the acorns were a big thing and also him being an arborist and all. Uh, about last January, uh, his daughter called me and said, I'm getting married in November. Can you make me a acorn box for my rings 
and then put another little compartment in it so that I can carry some of the ashes of my dad with me when I go down the aisle in November. And I said, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so this, um, this project was born out of her request, her commission. So thanks, B. Smith. Um, and uh, the, the lady's been um, raised all kinds of money for ALS research. And I saw yesterday, or heard yesterday on the news that they've actually made some headway in inter um, identifying a specific gene that has to do with that disease. So we're on our way to getting a cure. So um, that's, uh, that's kind of a little bit of my motivation for doing it all. And plus, he was my friend. So, um, and, uh, you know, he, uh, uh, ALS is a particularly cruel um, disease. And unfortunately, most of the insurance companies, uh, in spite of a major medical policy he had, and this is the part that really kind of hacks me off, is that uh, they, didn't, they didn't think that that was a, you know, a major medical problem uh, like cancer. So it's just a death sentence, that's all. So uh, hopefully ALS will get straightened out and we'll get a cure for that in the next, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 years. We'll see, you know. So uh, anyway, I've got my piece of wormy persimmon here, and I'm going to start on that. And um, I have another. I'll, I'll send a, a couple of these around. I'll send that one and then the, the pear one, and it, it, the lid doesn't fit real good on it. One of the pears very movable. This particular one here uh, is, who's familiar with some of the famous trees in Texas? Anybody ever heard of the Goose Island Oak? Um, there's a book by the Te Texas State Forest Service called Famous Trees of Texas. This is in the book. So that's the Goose Island Oak uh, acorn. And uh, I've left the lines on them. I haven't gone in with my eraser and cleaned up all that just for you all. So uh, I'll take these and send them around for you. Where you want to start? Right here, Bob. They didn't break when I kicked them around, so they're probably okay. Um, so I'm going to start by kind of putting a, a, a tenon on this thing. This is this will make AAW happy when they see this. I put on my eye and face protection here. I don't know what that does to the audio, probably improves it. Another use for a skew besides as a can opener. Uh, I don't have very much to reduce here, so. John Lindgren, you can't watch this because you'll make it better than I do next week. Do you mind leaving? <laughs> All right, so I got a 10 in there. Um, while I still got it between centers, I think I'll just go ahead and... I'm going to put another 10 in on So this is the stem, but I also use it to grip um, the 
lid for the secret compartment. If your lids, if your wood's kind of short, then you cheat and make that smaller, uh, shorter. Um, but okay. So I'll make the lid out of that and the stem out of that and I give myself a little room there to part that um, so I'm pretty much done with the can opener <laughs> um, little detail gouge and so um, The cap's the next part. And uh, need a little space for a tenon. And now I got a lot of space to make the acorn. So now you can kind of see the basics of an acorn going now. Um, and I'll just take it and, um, eh, I guess I can part it now. You, you quick today? You ready to jump out of the way if this thing comes flying out there? <laughs> Semi quick. All right. Well, well, maybe we'll find out. Told you to be quick. <laughs> Persimmon. All right. Not much blood. You got questions or comments while they're going around, just fire away. Oh, there's pith right here. I guess that's from a limb. Uh, the grain's running that way. So I don't think this is the center of the branch. I think it's the outer side of the log outside the pith this came from. Like I said, there's a branch right there that you can see. It doesn't go all the way through, so yeah, that'll probably be a headache sometime in the making of this. You know, it's still got lots of holes and bores. Um, you know, uh, I found that red-headed ash borer is just loves persimmon, so you hardly ever take down a persimmon if it's dead that doesn't have red-headed ash borer in it. Huh? What is it? It's an insect that eats your wood. <laughs> And he's got a red head. He kind of looks like a uh, 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 yellow jacket, except for he doesn't have a stinger. But his disguise is to be a yellow jacket, so you'll leave him alone. And he's got a red head, and his body has bands of yellow on it and red. And he's uh, he looks a lot like a hornet. And I've ta I've done I've removed these trees and turned the wood out of them, and found all different stages of that critter in one log. I mean, from adults to nymphs and lots of larvae. I mean, that's splattered all over the face shield. And, uh, <laughs> and 
bugs on the teeth, you know, the whole bit, like a happy motorcycle rider. Um, all right, so um, that I'm going to leave for later. Um, now, um, just I'm going to cheat a little bit, and instead of just hollowing it, I think I'm going to use some uh, Forstner bits to drill some of this. And um, it makes it quicker when you're fitting lids, if you've got a nice square edge somewhere. There, now. So that's like an inch and three-eighths. Um, I've actually increased the size on that. Um, over. I started with doing like inch and a quarter. I can go fairly deep with that because um, you know I'm going to reduce that down some. But you, I go in about half the thickness of the Forstner bit. Maybe a little more. If you want the exact dimensions, <laughs> you'll have to make them up yourself. <laughs> I don't do it that way. You know, um, never have. I, you know, I don't do this to for uh, precision. So I'm going to put a secondary bore in there, and that will give me my depth. That'll give me some depth. Yeah, I lose some of those sometimes. I'll show you one. It's even after it all got done. So this is supposed to be in the two for drawing at uh, SWAT. I don't know where the lid went. I guess I'm gonna have to make another one. <laughs> so, uh, what fun. You know, you, it's, uh, it's either going to turn up or I'm going to make another one. I don't, I don't know how that story ends yet. Um, so we can widen out or deepen the hole a little bit. spend a lot of time hollowing for the fun of it it's um <laughs> but you you can make a little bit you know a little bit wider of an area if you want to hollow all the way out till it's thin knock yourself out you just need enough to hear to carry a symbolic amount it's you know it's uh for what the purpose is when you know these were going to be were designed for so um kind of depends on what you're going to put in your secret compartment how big you need to make it um but I like to get rid of that hole down there from the Forstner bit tip and um, clean it up a little bit. So, but that's basically for tonight. That's, uh, that's all I'm going to take the time to do right now. And um, if I'm at the proper depth, see, I've got enough, enough here. If I, um, oh, I've got enough room to put a nice little tenon on there, maybe cheat down just a little bit I you know it's not the kind of thing when you're using mesquite and it's a box like that the idea of having perfectly even wall thickness isn't all that appealing you know it's not that necessary although Lindgren would do it that way <laughs> wouldn't you when you make everything you know three sixteenths or thinner yeah me neither that's the fun thing about turning you don't have to measure. Next time, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, unless you're doing some kind of production like, um, you know, table legs and stuff. Where they, well, hey, 
how come that leg looks different than that leg? Well, they're all four different, so just leave them alone. I like to like my tables with different legs. <laughs> uh, all right, so if my memory serves, I think I'm okay to go ahead and part that off because I have this and that base right there to butt up against and grip it from the inside so that I can um, tune the tenon later. So, you know, I like to do um, turn with a lot of options on how I grip it as I go along. So, you, you know, I'm always flipping it this way and flipping it that way. And if you always got a place to grab it by, you're going to, you know, you're going to be able to get through a piece no matter how bad you mess it up. So, I just... Um, you ready this time? Now I got my my cap and my lid, the basics of them. So um, that leaves the nut part. Um, so I might refine that shape a little bit first. There it is. I'm going to fill it with sawdust first. So he'll have enough weight. To add to his weights in there. on the end I need a mortise on this side So, like I said, for tonight's purposes, you know, when you do one, you can spend a lot of time making that the curve nice and perfect and nice and smooth all the way down through there. Um, but for, I throw knives too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how many of you are bad like I am and I just leave tools sitting on the lathe all the time? 
that everybody? I probably shouldn't do that. I don't know if that's a huge safety violation, but it's probably not the best thing in the world to be doing around spinning stuff. Um, anyway, so there's the basic of the, um, uh, the acorn, and now it's time to start fitting all this stuff. So um, I think I'm just going to take this one off the lathe and switch chucks because this one doesn't go small enough. Somebody said, what do you need all those chucks for? I don't know. I just like having them. So if you're going to have them, you might as well use them. <laughs> huh? Fit the top to the bottom. Um, well, I don't have this on the lathe. On this? No, that doesn't fit yet. It's close. That may or, that may or may not be the finished cut. I still I got lots of thickness here to play with. You know, when I get it all together, if it's off a little bit, then I can trim it back. Like I said, I like to keep my options open with ways to keep regripping these things. So, you know, that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not married till I get all the way down the aisle up in front of the preacher that way. I, you know, I can, I can still adjust this because this, you know, this nut should be a little bit bigger than the, the cap should be a little bit bigger than the nut. So, and that looks pretty close to the same to me. So I probably want to cut that down a little bit anyway. So um, for now, I'm just going to take this chuck off. And um, let me think about this for a second. <clears throat> Might be best to fit this first to that. And take that off, and I can still grip it in there, and then I can fit this to that. Yeah? There's lots of options. You, you know, think about it and do it any way that makes sense to you. That's what I did. I mean, I. There's nothing that says you got to always do it the same way every time either. Although for demos, it makes it nice and consistent so that your demo equals your handout. <laughs> uh, well, you know, hey, what are they going to do? Fire me? <laughs> so in the making of this thing, obviously, this needs to be a pretty snug fit. If it's loose like that pear one going around, you know, that's where Dad's ashes are. You know, you have to glue it in then once you put the ashes in. Otherwise, if, you know, it's a loose fit and you put Dad in, you know, it's liable to pop out in the middle of church, you know. Hey, everybody, here I am. You know, you get a little cloud of dust up there. Um, <laughs> Bruce would appreciate, appreciate that humor, by the way. <laughs> His wife told me that... Uh, he was sitting there watching, you know, he used to watch all kinds of different TV programming on cable. And um, I think in 2007, when they did the uh, first um, deal up there in Oklahoma, uh, the local, I think it was the Oklahoma City guy with the educational TV came out and he filmed and interviewed us and stuff like that. And so that's, that video's out there. And... Um, Bruce couldn't talk towards the end, but he he had a way of calling his wife, you know. And so she comes running in, and he's he's pointing at the TV, and he had found that video with me doing some turning up there in Oklahoma years ago. And uh, she said that was, you know, he was so amazed that he saw somebody he knew on TV, you know. <laughs> so kind of, kind of fun. He made his day, she said, so I was happy about that. I think I got quite a bit to get rid of here. It's just the one I dropped. Well, that wouldn't cut anything. Skew to the rescue.
About the time it took my ear off. <laughs> yeah, it popped off pretty good. How's that? All right. Man, it's hot in here. Maybe it's the long sleeves. And this. I start, this thing's trying to fog up on me. I wonder which is more different, the blind turner or to have all your protection on and... <laughs> I can't see a thing. So when I do these um, box lids, I do a little taper right there. And I'm trying to keep it pretty straight. I want it to be snug and not necessarily a pop type fit, but you know, kind of a, a tight little slider. The hole in the cap shrinking? Yeah, it probably is a little bit. Either that or I've just got a little bit of a taper from about right there to the back. I know that isn't all of it because it didn't, you know, it didn't seat down on the bottom yet. Excuse me? Yeah, that'll work. All right. 